HDP activation. HDP stands for high protect. It's also called secure mem. And in fact, we will activate it together. Do you remember what is or how works a high protect? It will add a new level of isolation of the TFM SBSFU because when the SBSFU has finished its, ex its execution and before launching the TFM API Secure, it will raise a flag inside the register which will make it disappear. That means once it's executed, then it can't be accessed anymore by the code or by the system. It can't be seen. Okay? And it's what I propose we experiment together right now. The scenario, in fact, we will activate and configure the HDP. The activation will be a code flag and the configuration will be to the set of the option byte. Then we will check with our debug configuration that after the execution of the TFM SBSFU, we can see it from the TFM Apply Secure or the TFM Apply Non Secure. So, first we need to activate it in the code. So, we will open the boot underscore hl underscore cfg dot h file. So, it was in the SBSFU. And we will um, uncomment the TFM HDP protect enable flag. Then we will recompile the SBSFU boot and we will flash this binary. The next step will be to activate the hide protect at the option byte level. So first we've got a flag to activate it. So HDP one enable. And we have to set the size of this region. And in fact, it will be the HDP underscore PN flag. And it's done saying the script step seven. Let's configure this first. So if I come back in the GFM SBSFU boot, now I will go in the include. Here you've got many, many files. And what is interesting us is the last one, TFM SBSFU boot inc. Here you can find the boot HL CFG.h. Okay, so I click on it. If I put it in the full um, screen, then go on the line 41 and please and comment TFM HDP protectable. The next step is to save the file. Quite important because by default it won't be down by cube ID. So please remember to save it. The star here should disappear. Okay. So that's it to activate this functionality on the TFM SBSFU boot. We just need to select now the project and then click on build again. Let's wait this build completion. It's okay. So the next step will be to flash my updated version of the SBSFU. I just double click on it. And then I have to activate the option byte linked to the HDP because if I only use it, I would just raise the flag, but the functionality is not activated at option byte level, it won't work. So don't forget to do the step seven, configure HDP. You can see a reset has been triggered, probably thanks this connection under reset that is done in the script. So everything is fine. Now let's check with the debugger that this SBSFU is isolated. So to do this, we will debug again the SBSFU boot. So it will launch the previous configuration and then we will try to check the memory content at the address C00100. This is the location of the SBSFU. You can check it where we flash this binary. And let's see it together. So I come back to kubeid. So now I will debug 
and this time it will automatically launch the configuration we have created together just before. So it won't flash the SBSFU, it will only, I uh, will say, uh, launch the debugging session. So we will switch to debug perspective. And we are stopped in the GFM SBSFU. You can see here the location of the PC. We are on A3FE. But here in the memory, I would like to check this address OX0C001. And in fact, this is where we flash our SBSFU. So the code is behind this and you can also check this and you will be in the same location so here yeah, I can see this memory if I press just resume it will stop you remember in the secure application because it was a breakpoint we set together and as you can see now this portion of the flash can't be seen anymore this is exactly what we want to do with the high memory protect so it's uh, isolation, an additional uh, isolation, but that means also that for execution point of view, if you've got some information to share between the SBSFU and the secure application, it should be prepared by the secure boot inside some RAM that is protected or backup register protected, and then it can be shared with the GFM secure application. And it's how it's handled and how we can share some information between those two blocks. So again, I will stop the debugging session and come back to my presentation. So after experimenting the GFM SBSFU functionality, the compilation and debug, here we just see how to activate this functionality. And also we experiment it. It's quite fast, but quite simple, but it really show the purpose of this uh, isolation. Now, the next possible handle is to activate the RGP0.5. That means the capability to connect only when you are in non-secure mode. That means you can debug only the non-secure application. Again, if you stop here, please go to the slide board cleanup. <laughs> 